Right, hey guys, how are we doing? Back another video from Six. So I have recently finished the uh, Yu Yu Hakusho anime. I've checked out Totally Dark Mark's reviews for him, thought they were quite interesting. And if you want to see my reaction to the final episode of Yu Yu Hakusho, that is on the Patreon page. Uh, so link is in the description, go check that out. But I thought it'd be cool to see what Six thinks. Uh, I like Six's videos, I like um, his uh, his analysis and that. And um, I thought this would be interesting because it's, it's very apparent that uh, Jujutsu Kaisen is influenced by this and Hunt Hunter etc so yeah let's see what uh let's see what six thought about this shall I? Yu Yu Hakusho quickly skyrocketed to become one of my all-time favorites Yusuke is a particularly likable guy for the well top five just got DBZ Naruto JJK Attack on Titan and then we got Death Note this right cool, cool majority of the series and the series since it came out in the 90s definitely has an old feel to it but not dated with the exception of a few jokes if you don't know what Yu Yu Hakusho is, it's the manga that Togashi wrote prior to Hunter x Hunter. Mm -hmm. And if you want an example of a manga greatly influenced by Yu Yu Hakusho, just go read JJK again. I plan on doing another video about the series, or possibly multiple, but I thought it'd be important to get a video out with my general thoughts on the series so people know where my head's at while I'm breaking down specific parts of the franchise that don't really reflect my opinion on it. Okay, cool. I'm going to do this in an arc by arc format, so while I don't recommend it, if you want to skip around, there are multiple chapters on the video for you to do that. The Spirit Detective Saga spans the first 51 chapters of the Yu Yu Hakusho manga, which given the span of 175 means it's about one third of the manga, but this saga is not what made me really love the show. While it's definitely not bad at this point, it's the part of the story that is least like a shonen. Yeah, it's it's just a setup, isn't it? And again, I thought it was interesting that like uh, it, the anime cut out quite a bit of this opening just to like get into. The, to its credit, it turns up fairly stuff. quickly, especially with the introduction of Genkai and flowing into the introduction of the Togoro brothers. But while this is my least favorite part of the manga, I don't really have any bad things to say about it. And in terms of the other arcs and sagas, this one I definitely have the least amount of words for. The first 18 chapters of the manga are spent turning Yusuke into an at least somewhat respectable human being. Yeah, he starts off as like a thug, doesn't he? And it's just meant to be like, look, come on, you, we can't have our main character be this way. <laughs> this arc is called Yusuke's Ordeal. Yusuke from chapter 1 is a pretty low life guy. Let's actually just read off his resume as told to us in chapter 1. Crude and violent, impatient and reckless, and has sticky fingers and a stupid brain. Fights, extorts, shoplifts, smokes, drinks, gambles, has a reserved seat in the guidance counselor's office, etc, etc. He also guy, does wow. much more than this, but Botan doesn't list them all. And the one time he actually does something good, he receives the ultimate punishment, that being his demise. The opening was at least a little bit of a shakeup for me. Not too many series start off with the main character literally dying. dying yeah. <laughs> but in retrospect, this was probably the best thing to happen in Yusuke's life. You definitely gather from Yusuke at first that his life isn't that important to him. He doesn't even find a purpose in coming back to life, but the thing is, he doesn't respect death either. Granted, death does come to Yusuke in the form of a high school girl that goes ding ding ding, but he immediately tries to stare her down and clearly doesn't respect or fear her. Mm -hmm. I don't want to spend too much time on Yusuke's character since I plan on making a separate video breaking him down in the future. I'm looking forward to these videos, I think that'll be cool. For the most part, the cast in general is at its weakest during this arc. Botan is yeah, Kuwabara grows so much. My I love him. Kuwabara is my favorite character. The only one who remains relatively the same action. throughout the rest of the series. Kuwabara, on the other hand, is particularly interesting because compared to himself later in the manga, I don't want to say he sucks here, but he's not the top five character that I'd come to enjoy throughout most of the rest of the story. Artifacts of Darkness, the second arc of the series, introduces two of the series' staple characters, Yay, Hiei Karama. and Karama. Their introduction is fairly strong. It has everything you can kind of ask for. Now that we're getting deeper into the manga, into the underworld detective stuff, a new part of the universe with these dark artifacts and with them being introduced this way, they sort of just serve as plot devices to help us get to know these characters. They really do, because we don't really get much stuff like that later on, do we? More. Goki, who I, I don't care things, too much but... about since I'm fairly certain that all he's supposed to represent is greed or gluttony, and the tool he uses helps him eat more souls. Not too much of a character to attach to. He comes off as more of a villain of the week than anything major. Definitely. I'd come to appreciate Karama a lot more when I revisited this part of the story because, being honest, I didn't really like him until the chapter Black Saga. 
PA is someone I liked pretty much from the very beginning. He definitely my second favorite character in the franchise after Ooh, Yusuke. Interesting. Okay, he's got a, he's got the most interesting character design out of the main cast, I suppose, as well. And similarly, I want to make a video about him alone, so I'm not going to ramble on too long here. Ginkai's tournament is okay. I wish it had a more serious tone to it, and going in, I definitely thought that it would. This was the first time in the manga where I thought the pacing was too fast. Hmm. I don't know how much this would benefit from a slower pace and if anything, I'd only add maybe 5 more chapters. I also don't like the way that Yusuke sort of gets over on Rando because of luck in the end and especially since there is a heavy emphasis. There's a lot of lucky things that happen with Yusuke in this first, like, in this bit. This is on the curses Rando used turning on him and him getting careless, but we don't really see curses for the rest of the franchise. Genkai is great though. She's the standard old true, master actually, yeah. we see in Shonen, but for her not being male is refreshing from a purely design perspective, since there is never too much emphasis on her being a woman outside of the fact that she just looks like one. Following from this, the Beast of May's castle was also fairly boring. I didn't like Yusuke's lack of a significant power up after training with Ginkai, and the antagonists in this arc were super lame. The only fight I can say I really enjoyed was Kurobara vs Byako. He showed out as always, but to call what he did a fight would be an insult. He just violated this random. Yeah, that Suzaki fight was did not last long at all. The guy just turns up over that he is just like, da -da -da -da, oh, I've actually got you. Kurobara's fight was sick. So he had like two, two different rounds to it, and it seemed very video game esque as well. Also pretty lame, and I know you're not really supposed to like the villain of the arc. Villains are, after all, bad people. Yeah. But this guy is just annoying, and his design sucks. Rescue his design Yukina is, a bit is lame. definitely a strong end to this saga, though. It's only six chapters, but it introduces the series' best antagonist, or arguably so, next to Sensui with Tugro, and the fighting in this is awesome. I'm also a big Hikari fan, so even though I don't do it myself, I love seeing other people gamble. And even though it was a setup in the end, watching Sakio constantly bet on Yusuke and Kuwabara was fun to see. It was interesting. This arc has a particularly strong end with Togo revealing to Yusuke that he's still alive and challenging him to the dark tournament. Considering Yusuke's attitude up to this point and overall cockiness, his fear at Togoro's mere presence is all too real and I swear I could feel it through the pages. Challenging him is also generous wording here. Togoro basically threatens Yusuke into joining the tournament by saying he'll end his life if he doesn't enter. I will kill but you if you don't fight me. that brings us to this masterpiece <laughs> of an arc. What I consider to be tied with the 23rd World Martial Arts Tournament in Original Dragon Ball Oof. for the best tournament in Shonen, the Dark Tournament. God damn. Where do I even be- Okay, and interestingly, I'm going to be- I've never watched the original Dragon Ball. I've seen like clips and seen people talk about it, but um, like end of the month, I'm going to start reacting to- Dragon Ball on the Patreon page as well. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Again, with how amazing this arc is. I guess we can start with the obvious since it's tournaments. The fights in this arc are amazing to say the least. Yusuke vs. Togoro is very easily up it's there in terms so of the big fights so to come good. out of Shonen. And as usual, whenever Hiei is on screen, he's a showstopper. I also think the pacing in this arc is some of the best pacing for a tournament arc I've seen in Shonen. At times, tournament arcs can drag because, let's face it, every combatant being interesting and keeping stakes high difficult, is near it? impossible to do while also progressing the story at a steady rate. Togashi goes through the approach of leaving it on the battlefield, if you will. If there are members of Team Yusuke that can't fight at the time, the tournament must go on and the current fighters make do with what they have at the time. This can sometimes lead to so three sick. and five fights, but it doesn't matter because Togashi uses those high stress, high intensity situations to progress the other characters in terms of their strength, and the result is usually pretty nice. On the flip side of this, when two teams of no importance are about to fight, or at least of no importance to the reader, we're not bored with trying to learn 10 new characters at once. Togashi lets us know the winner and gives us a crowd reaction to keep things moving along nicely. There's also a lot going on in this tournament. Pretty much every time Team Yusuke has to fight, which is 6 by my count, we have to be introduced to 5 new characters. This is on top of each character in Team Yusuke having their own narratives going on, as well as Togoro on the other side in his feud with Genkai. For example, yeah, the, the Togoro Genkai thing was cool as well, and then the other bit with um, oh, the guy that's got that pays Togoro wanting to 
get all the money to open a portal to the demon world. It's like, oh, this is, there's, there's a lot of plot. But while Yusuke is put out of commission by Genkai after receiving her spirit orb, while that's happening or directly following it, Yusuke's team has to fight the fractured fairy tales while being down two members because Yusuke and Genkai are gone. When done, Genkai shows up to help Team Yusuke and gets her identity revealed in the process. After continuing to help Team Yusuke, Genkai goes to meet Togoro. We learn more about their story. Genkai so dies and at the same the time Yusuke gets way stronger and stumbles across her dead body. All of this is juggled fairly well and I obviously left out some extremely important details but that and the fights between four different teams are all settled within 15 chapters while fleshing out every decision our main cast makes. Kurama has his struggles after the mind games played on him by Team Togoro. Hiei struggles with his powerlessness and wanting to match 80% Togoro. And Yusuke gained all this new power but loses his master and to Togoro almost at the same time. This is also a given from all the panels I've been putting on screen, but Tagashi drew his ass off in this yeah, arc. Man, this looks there great. are literally examples of pages where Tagashi just switches styles two or three times and it's genuinely amazing. I'm no cool. art major or anything, but I do recognize or mostly subscribe to the belief that every panel has a meaning or is trying to tell you something. So when I see Togoro laughing and smiling while overlooking Hanging Neck Island, it makes me think Togoro Yo. is the end game, or that basically Togoro is the dark tournament. When I think about it more, that just makes the most that sense to me. Boss. Most people in the tournament are there because of Togoro, and at the very least, Yusuke is there because of Togoro, which is the entire reason we even get to see the tournament. And Togoro, if he wanted to, could literally beat every single person present. To wrap up this section of the video, I want to talk about Yusuke versus Togoro and my favorite fights from each of the main cast members, Hiei, cool. Kurama, Kurobara, and Genkai. We'll start with Kurama because while I never really disliked Kurama, he didn't particularly become likable for me until this arc. Not in the way that Kurama sucked or anything, I just never really cared when the guy was on screen because I don't like his powers or his design. This is going to sound pretty cliche, but my favorite fight Kurama has is versus Karasu. For one, this is a small thing, but Kurama's analytical ability has been pretty on point up to now. Normally when Kurama says man. something, I clever take it as fact. So to see that Kurama had gotten Karasu's ability wrong was surprising for one, but to see that he had gotten it wrong for a reason that was previously established in a tournament was cool. That being, to paraphrase, aura attacks way stronger than you, you can't see. So Kurama's stalling fails outright and he- all oh, right, so it does have the tiny little. I thought this this caught this put me off, man. The tiny little glasses design on the end, which looks like Togoro's glasses, was just really weird for me. But mm. he gets pushed into <laughs> Demon Fox form in the first chapter, and it's short lived. But the fight itself is pretty short, also. I hate to sound like a meathead, but there is a giant explosion in this fight, and it's really cool. I also appreciate that Karama ended this fight without having to rely on the Demon Fox. But it's kind of weird how they randomly mention that Demon Fox's power is going into his human form. But it's not a make or break thing for me, just a weird detail I don't really think needed to be added. My favorite Hiei fight is, again, I know, cliche, but Hiei versus Bui. But I like this Mate, fight for yeah. a couple of reasons. One is that Bui cool. is just blatantly very cool yeah. and on top of being very cool <laughs> he has a very cool design yeah both when he has his armor on and when he takes the armor off everyone knows by now i'm a huge dragon ball fan and everything about this guy's design just screams dragon ball to me his armor looks like something straight out of early dragon ball he made it to restrain himself because his full power isn't easy to contain just like frieza in his forms cool, yeah. and his arms look just like piccolo's arms this fight is pretty short, but that's just the result of it not wasting any of his panel time. Bui is clearly not a match for Hiei with his armor on, so he removes the armor and uses something that isn't easy to control. Hiei in response removes his talismans and uses something that isn't easy to control. Bui reversing the black dragon is also extremely cool, and that's really what this fight boils down to. It's just a match of cool stuff. Cool. There isn't some <laughs> crazy deep narrative to it, just two Cool, strong dudes fighting. It's Hell drawing yeah. well. There are cool powers and good. it's short. As for Kurobara, call this a cop out if you will, but I don't really have a favorite fight for him because while I like Kurobara, a lot of it's not really for his combat ability. 
He most of the time is just extremely entertaining for his dialogue alone, so while his fights with Rinku and the older Togoro brother are fairly cool in their own right, the fight with Rinku was just goofy and not in a way I really enjoyed. And the fight with the older Togoro is one of the few in this tournament I don't think benefited from being as short as it did. I'd have enjoyed another chapter or so, but honestly even thinking about how to extend this fight is way more of a task than it should be, and it makes me think the fight just can't be extended, so I'm left with a fight that I can't find out how to make longer, but I still think is too short, right. and it just makes me think this fight didn't have all that much potential to begin with. Not that it's bad, if I had to rate it I'd probably give it like a 7 out of 10, but when most of the fights in this tournament are a 9 and above, I don't really like wow. that rating. Also on the flip side, it may be that the way to make this fight better isn't extending it and lies in another area, but I haven't figured that out yet and it's not too important anyway. Now on to the titan fight of the arc, Yusuke vs Togoro, well, and up. this yeah. has virtually everything I want in a fight. For one, I can't stress enough how much I like it more when fighters progress in a fight as opposed to declining. This is true on two levels for Yusuke, growing as a person and a fighter, but Togoro's progression is mostly just him going harder. Examples of something like this is Naruto vs Sasuke in part 1. The fight is them oof, getting oof. continually stronger until their ultimate clash, and a similar thing happens here when Yusuke goes into this fight not even fully completing his training. He tries to beat Togoro while still weighed down with the aura locks that Genkai had placed on him earlier. Togoro is also insanely intense. The way Togashi draws him and the words he say complement each other so well. The style switching I talked about earlier that Togashi does randomly, he does it the most on Togoro and it always fits. It's almost like Togoro is in a completely different realm than everyone else in the manga. It does wonders for making him feel overall just different. That's and his words are so extremely simple. He really only cares about one thing and it's really all he ever talks about and he bases almost all his sentences off of it and that's his own power. So much so he doesn't even care about identity, just power itself. He even tells Genkai that she just isn't Genkai, she's her fading echo because her power is so weak now. Mm. Without recapping the entire Yusuke fight, I'd like to skip ahead here because Togoro's end is also the best of the best. Genkai choosing to appear in front of him in her younger that was form nice. for their final yeah, 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 that was cool. Togoro's choice of his own punishment and then learning the punishment he chose was just an extension of the punishment he felt he needed for the death of his former students. It was all just great. While I do appreciate a good backstory every now and then to learn more about a villain in the middle of an arc, sometimes the villain just needs to be the bad guy at that point in time. So learning about Togoro's Afterwards. somewhat sad backstory after he had already committed yeah, all cool. his crimes makes you only feel bad for him as far as, hey, it's pretty fucked up, but not in a way like, oh man, he didn't deserve all this. No, no, no. Yusuke also really impressed me, getting his resolve back and his warning shot at Togoro before saying his next shot was for his total obliteration was cool too. But to wrap the dark tournament section up, like I said, this is probably my second favorite tournament arc in Shonen, God damn. and it's the best saga in Yu Yu Hakusho in my opinion, though it's followed closely by the next saga, the Chapter Black Saga. This arc starts off fairly boring, and I want everyone to keep in mind while I'm saying this, that I was binging this manga when I was reading it. Okay, and Chapter Black, again, I quite liked, until, and again, I'm anime only, so I don't, but I said this in Mark's review, I liked Chapter Black, Thought it was interesting until the final fight with the with the bad guy. I was just like, oh, this is, this is stupid. <laughs> so switching to the slow pace after the dark tournament was very jarring to say the least, but I'm willing to bet on a week to week basis it might not feel that way. Mm -hmm. The start of this arc focuses on a new element of the power system that's basically domain expansions from Jujutsu Kaisen yeah, 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 but in the original thought, form yeah. called Territories. territories I will say that Tagashi does an extremely amazing job having these things be convincingly powerful by having all the users be conventionally very weak but get the complete upper hand on Yusuke and everyone else. This all turns out to be a test by Genkai which was cool I guess, although from memory this test and lesson didn't amount to anything. The next time Yusuke gets a chance he rushes into a fight and the opponents get the upper hand on him, even if it's momentary. The doctor portion is pretty cool, he gave off villain of the week aura for me personally, yeah. because 
evil doctor is just real movie stuff <laughs> but it's not like he was lame he just never gave anything to make me feel his presence as a true villain or a true threat that is in stark difference to the next two guys since we and the sniper both of these guys make their entrance fantastically i know we had technically seen since we before this but that was only for a brief moment this is right after we get his backstory which is strikingly similar to ghettos or i guess ghettos is similar to him but this guy is definitely better than ghetto at least in my opinion since we's debut to his fighting is amazing in most ways i think since we is the kind of perfect fighter in yu yu Hakusho, even though yusuke ends up surpassing him later on in the series Having Sensui essentially be a peak martial artist was a great move by Togashi, especially in contrast to how Yusuke and everyone else has fought up to this point. Something that is a little annoying to see though is Yusuke hopping on a bike to chase these guys down <laughs> and Sensui and his crew using a car to get away. To Togashi's credit, he does have them seem impressive by having the truck dust this sports car and Yusuke follows suit dusting the car on a bike, yeah. but I don't know, maybe it's just the power scaler in me, but watching Yusuke, who was reacting to a dude that literally caught lightning and who dodged bullets, use a bike to catch a truck <laughs> is just a little weird to me. Like I said though, to Togashi's credit, these things do seem faster than normal, but not fast enough. Normal humans mm. can still react to them pretty easily. Yusuke vs the Sniper is a pretty good fight, if not for any other reason, then this guy's ability is so cool. I don't know if it's the first person shooter player in me or whatever, but I have an odd respect for crazy accuracy. So watching Yusuke get done in by a guy whose only real ability is to be able to hit things very accurately and use whatever he wants as bullets appeal to me. Similarly, Hiei appearing and fighting with Yusuke for the purpose that of helping him relieve his tension one. was just a goaded moment from Hiei. Mm, I did like Speaking that. of goaded moments, everything about the battle in the Game Master's territory was great. The kid being extremely good at the game, finding out how Sensui manipulated him, and it ending with Kurama doing, you know, that, yeah. it was great. Wow. This was the moment Kurama went into my top six, this exact panel. He's got that look on his face like he didn't want to do it, but it just to. had to be yeah. done. I want to say Yusuke's fight with Sensui and his multiple personalities is probably my second favorite fight in the series overall, oh, okay. but the dialogue here is top notch. I'm not going to break it down or anything since I'm just trying to give my thoughts, but this is probably my favorite dialogue in the series. I think Yusuke being a demon or a throwback could have been a bit more built up, and I only say that because of how important it was at the time. This, this is the come reason out of nowhere. Yusuke like, is alive to this on? day, and it's the reason he's as powerful as he is. Compared to some of the other shonen Yu Yu Hakusho shares a space with, it's a shorter story, but to give a prime example, Goku being a Saiyan, while it's much more, I want to say, apparent that Goku isn't a normal human than Yusuke isn't a normal human, mm. we don't find out Goku is a Saiyan until after almost 200 chapters, down, yeah. which is more than Yu Yu Hakusho's entire run. Whoa. So Goku is a Saiyan for more than half of the Dragon Ball manga. We don't find out Yusuke is a throwback until after chapter 148, which is 27 chapters before the manga ends. Cool. This doesn't make it a negative for the series, it's just not a very welcome surprise. Up to this point, I like to think I had pretty great things to say about Yu Yu Show. In this last arc, while I don't hate it, I can't help but think what it could have been. It's bad, isn't it? Because I remember thinking, like, seeing Mark didn't really enjoy this last one, but I enjoyed this last one, but I think it's the way that the anime seems to, like, add more in and pace it better. Um, and it had a proper ending to it. I know Togashi's declining health at this point, and I think it's fair because of that to be generous and not call the series bad or the ending bad. But you do kind of have to use your imagination a little bit, and when I do that, it's almost worse. This arc had the most potential as a concept easily, and when I was reading it, I honestly thought there might be some side story one shot drawn years later I could pick up and go read, but obviously that didn't end up being the case. This series also suffers from a massive power cliff, which I mean is kind of just standard to Shonen at this point. So I don't really bat an eye at these things, but if that's something you have an issue with, it's probably really going to bother you here, especially with how abrupt it is.
So when it comes to the Three Kings arc, I like it. I just wanted so much more out of it. And I think the blueprint is there. That's pretty much all I had to say about this I really series, enjoyed though, the and Three I'll Kings. I'll do a video on how strong Yusuke is soon, so look forward to that. It's weird, isn't it? It's like, yeah, seems to be that the manga, because he just wanted to end the story pretty much. I think the anime is the way to go with the Three Kings. And I really liked the last episode as well in the anime. I thought it was really, really nice to get everyone together the way they did. So, yeah, and like I said, if you want to see my reaction to that, uh, it's in on my Patreon page. But yeah, thank you to my patrons. If you want to have your name at the end of every video and want to be able to watch patron-only reactions, link is in the description to the Patreon page. One dollar a month is the last push on us. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys for that. And thank you all for watching. What do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of this? Click like, subscribe if you haven't already. Leave comments down below. Let me know what I should watch and discuss in future videos. I'll see you guys all you guys next time.